Achilles was a Sindarin elf who was part of the Fellowship of the Ring in the Third Age. As he was the son of the elven king, Thranduil of Mirkwood, Legolas was a prince of the woodland realm, a messenger and a master bowman. With his keen eyesight, sensitive hearing, and excellent bowmanship, Legolas was a valuable resource to the other eight members of his fellowship. His age was never stated by Tolkien. Legolas was a well known was well known for becoming friends with the dwarf Gimli, despite their long held differences. It is not known whether Legolas was Thranduil's only son, I think I'm saying that right, or whether he was heir to his father's crown. Legolas was the son of Thranduil, the king of the elves of northern Mirkwood. Legolas came to the council of Elrond in Rivendell, the great meeting held by the elf lord Elrond, as a messenger from his father to discuss the escape of Gollum. When the council were choosing the nine walkers to pit against the nine riders, Legolas volunteered to represent the elves and became one of the memberships or one of the members of the fellowship that set out to destroy the One Ring. During their journey, Legolas stayed at the rear due to his keen eyes. On Caradhras, Legolas was able to run nimbly over the snow, making little imprints in it, whereas his companions struggled to plow through it. When Gandalf gave his counsel, Legolas voted against passing through Moria. In the morning, the fellowship was waylaid by wargs and Legolas fought for their defense. After the battle, he picked up his arrows, save by one which was damaged. Gimli quarreled with him in Moria which was not unexpected considering the ancient quarrel between elves and dwarves, which began after the destruction of Doriath, and also because Legolas' father, Thranduil, once imprisoned Gimli's father, Glowen. I really feel like I'm butchering these names, I don't know. If you'd like to leave a comment below and let me know if I'm butchering these names, then... Uh, I would appreciate that. Okay. He and Gimli became friends, moreover, when Gimli greeted the elven queen Galandriel with gentle words. The fellowship left Lothlorien after receiving several gifts. Legolas was given a new Galadrim longbow, along with other gifts that Galadriel and Celeborn gave him and the rest of the fellowship, such as elven cloaks and lembas, elm, elven bread. While the fellowship was traveling over the river Anduin, Legolas used his new bow to shoot down a nearby Nazgul with one masterful shot in the dark. Legolas and Aragorn sang a song of lament for the fall of Boromir. He led the, fe the rest of the fellowship through Rohan when Merry and Pippin were taken by the Uruk High. Also in Rohan, he acquired a gray horse named Arad on which he and Gimli would often ride together. In Fangorn Forest, Legolas Aragorn and Gimli were reunited with Gandalf, now called Gandalf the White. Upon their meeting, Gandalf delivered the messages of Galadriel to the three hunters, which was, Legolas, Greenleaf, long under tree, in joy thou hast lived, beware of the seal of if thou hearest 
the cry of the gull on the shore. Thy heart shall then rest in the forest no more. In the Battle of the Hohenberg, Legolas and Gimli engaged in an orc slaying contest that Gimli won, the score being 42 to 43 respectively. Though Legolas was not jealous, stating, You have passed my score but by one, but I do not grunge with you, oh my. You have passed my score by one, but I do not grudge you the game. So glad am I to see you on your legs. In Rohan, he and Gimli followed Aragorn and Aladan the and El Elro. This reading is not going to be easy for me because these names are just not real names. Aladan and Elro here to the paths of the dead. His horse Arid refused to enter the paths, and Legolas calmed him. Their company rode on, and Aladan on the last, but Legolas turned back and saw the dead following the gray company. Legolas fought in the battle of the Pelennor fields and with Gimli and the sons of Elrond. After the battle, he and Gimli entered Minas Tirith, Legolas sang an elven song as he walked, and suggested that the place needed more gardens. They meet Prince Imrahil, and went to the Houses of Healing. There he heard the cries of the gulls at Palargur, Palargur this is ridiculous, and sang a song about his sea longing. After the war, after the destruction of the One Ring and of Sauron, Legolas stayed for the coronation of Aragorn and his marriage to Arwen. Later, Legolas and Gimli traveled together to Helm's Deep, visiting the glittering caves, and then later traveled through Fangorn Forest as Legolas and Gimli had agreed. Eventually, Legolas came to Ithilien with some of his people, with his father's leave, to live out his remaining time in Middle-earth, helping to restore the devastated forests of that war-ravaged land. After the death of King Elisar, Legolas made a ship in Ithilien, and through Anduin, he left Middle-earth to go over the sea. The strong friendship with Gimli prompted him to invite Gimli to go to the Undying Lands, making him the first and only dwarf to do so. Etymology The name Legolas is a sylvan dialect form of pure Sindarin Legolas Greenleaf. It consists of the Sindarin words leag, green, or golas, a collection of leaves, foliage being a prefixed collective form of las, or leaf. The Quenya translation of Legolas is lekualase. There might however, be a certain meaning to his name. Leag is a very rare archaic word for green, which is normally replaced by Kalan, and is otherwise almost o only preserved in Legrim, Leagel. It may be that Thranduil named his son Legolas to at least in part refer to his people, who were remote kin and ancestors of the later Sylvan elves the Queen Thranduil ruled. The people, oh my gosh. His character. Although he lived among them in their culture, 
Michaelis was not fully of the Sylvan Elves. As a son of the Elven King Thranduil, who had originally come from Doriath, Legolas was at least part Sindarin elf. As his mother's identity is completely unknown, this is complicated by the fact that a small minority of Sindarin elves ruled the predominantly silver, sylvan woodland realm of northern Mirkwood, a minority to which Legolas belonged. The Sindarin minority in that realm, who should have been nobler and wiser than the Sylvan Elves, can be seen as having gone native at the end of the First Age, after Morgoth was defeated and all of the Grand Elf Kingdoms of Beleriand were destroyed, they can be seen as going back to a simpler time in their culture. Like all elves, Legolas has a great respect and appreciation for nature. While in Fangorn Forest, he longed to return once more in order to, visit, to explore its wonders more thoroughly. He is kind and cares greatly for his friends, even Gimli the Dwarf. Though it was a rarity for elves and dwarves to express a liking for one another because of their feud. Due to his age, however, it sometimes seems rather patronizing toward the mortals around him. Age Tolkien does not specifically give Legolas' age, but many have used what details Tolkien does give to hazard a guess. There are no known dates concerning Legolas before TA 3018. It's safe to say that Legolas was most likely born after Orofer, his grandfather, moved his people across the Misty Mountains. Since in the book he was re he referred to the Njoldor elves as a strange race, that would mean that he's at most 5,000 years old, which places his birth date in the latter part of the Second Age, at the earliest. Legolas is never mentioned in any account of the last alliance of elves and men, so most assume he was born in the Third Age, after Isildur took the Ring of Power. Legolas has never been to Lorien before he travels there with the Fellowship. Therefore, we can assume that he was not with his grandfather's people when they left Lorien for northern Mirkwood. Before the shadow of Dol Guldor fell on Mirkwood in TA 1000, Legolas' people spent time amongst their Lorien neighbors. But when the shadow fell, they retreated before it as it spread ever northward until at last Thranduil established his realm in the northeast of the forest and delved there, for, delved there a fortress and great halls underground. So it seems likely that Legolas' birth date was after TA 1000, when the kingdom of northern Mirkwood was created. This would make him younger than any other elf character in the series, including Arwen, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Legolas refers to his traveling companions many times as children. Yet when he arrived at Fangorn, he claimed to feel young compared to the forest, saying, It is old, very old, so old that I almost feel young again, as I have not felt since I journeyed with you children. Legolas uses an elven bow and a long white dagger with lethal precision. Here, he prefers to pierce his enemies from afar, but he does sometimes use daggers in close combat. In Lothmorian, he was given a long bow of the Galadrum, which was longer and 
stouter than those of the fashioned of the fashion of Mirkwood. Nevertheless, he adopts to his he adapts to his new bow, and makes deadly use of it in the remainder of the War of the Ring. This bow had a draw weight of about 150 pounds. You could reputedly send an arrow with fatal force for over 400 yards. The bow was over six feet tall and was made from a single piece of Malorn heartwood. Its string had a single strand of Galadriel's hair entwined with it to help speed the arrow along even faster. Legolas' skill with the bow is revered, even as good as that of Beleg. Alright guys, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a uh, tough time reading today apparently, uh, especially with all these um, names that are just not normal to say. It's not like I'm reading John or anything, but uh, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up, uh, comment below, um, let me know if, you know, what I was pronouncing wrong or anything, and uh, please subscribe, uh, I definitely appreciate all your subscriptions, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, which will be on Thursday.